So now that we've seen how to work with basic variables and how to get them to display inside of a text field as we did, uh, we'll now move on to event handlers. And this is how we can manage to have our buttons and our movie clips do things for us. So let's get through this, but first let me just draw your attention to the fact that I've reorganized my layers to be a little bit more logical. For example, here at the very top we have the A layer which represents our action script layer. That's where we're going to be writing action script and only action script. Don't put anything else on this layer. Notice I've locked it. Also, we've got the T layer, and that represents our text field, as we had in the previous example. I've also got an empty layer for MC movie clips and B buttons. So this is going to be our basic structure. Let's now put an event handler on a button. So in order to do this, I'm just going to make a very simple circle press F8 to convert this into a symbol. The name here doesn't really matter, but the type button is what's most important. Now that we've got that done, the real important issue that I want to have you do is give this particular button an instance name. So if you've selected the instance of the button in the property window, let's just give it a simple name like B1 for the first button. If there's other buttons, we'll call them B2, 3, 4, whatever. But here, I want to remind us all that whenever we put a graphic uh, of any kind on the stage, you should always associate the instance name with the proper suffix. So in other words, button will have the suffix underscore btn, much like the text field had the suffix underscore txt. So I'm going to call this b1 underscore btn. So now our instance has a proper instance name. We can now get ready to put an event on this. Before we do that, I just want to make mention of how actions were attached to buttons in the past. In previous versions of Flash, most likely what you would have seen is somebody selecting the instance of that button, and then in the action script window, applying an event handler to this button. Notice the button B1BTN is what's selected here. In order to do that, what would happen in the past was you'd say on, for example, press, and you would just have your curly brackets, and at this point, I'll separate them, um, we could do something like a simple trace message here. Let's trace a message, and we'll say the older paradigm. So this is the older model of working in Flash. Notice if I press Control Enter, when I press this button, my output window says the older paradigm. All right, well, that's fine, but I'm here to show you the most recent ways of working. And this has been around for quite some time, but just in case we're used to an older way of writing event handlers, now what we do is create something called callback functions. Notice what I've done, I've selected frame number one of the action script layer. So down here, I'm actually going to be applying um, an event handler, associating it, associating it to that button directly on the first frame of the action layer. So here, let's just write a little comment to ourselves. Keep that in practice. I'll just say callback functions. And directly after that single line comment, what we're going to do is target that button. Remember how we did it with the text field, right? Um, I could come here and I could say, look, I want B1BTN. And because it has an instance name, we can see it directly. Could give it an absolute reference. I could give it a relative reference. I'm going to choose relative. And look at this. I can actually even, same as the text field, just say B1BTN. Why? Because it's already on the root level. So I know that's going work. At this point, when I put the dot in the dot syntax, drop-down list appears, and because we're using underscore btn, all of these particular properties that we can associate with movie clips and other things will also be able to associate with buttons, but you'll notice that there are event handlers here specific to buttons. And as you can see, when we put in on with a capital P, I can just press enter and now we associate with this particular button b1 btn on press now the only thing that's different from the first method that i showed you was 
to create a callback function. So here we say equals function, open and close regular brackets, and that is declaring to Flash like, look, this is a callback function. This is what's going to happen every time we press that button. So again, just like in the first example, we have our curly braces, and these particular uh, braces encompass the action. So when I press this button, what happens? Let's do a simple trace method again. Trace the new method. Oh, you know what? Let's just say callback function. I would just drive the point home. Callback. And when we close this and test our movie with Control Enter, you'll notice when I press this, bang, callback. So isn't that easy? It's a lot easier than putting individual scripts all over different buttons. And in this fashion, we're just making it so much simpler for yourself or anybody else who's working with this file to locate information. It's all on frame number one of the action script layer. All right, let's do something a little bit more interesting with this. Remember how we declared values for my number and my string, right? And we displayed my string and my number inside of a little message which displays in the text field. Well, let's do something to change that. For example, the scope of this variable. When we talk about variable scope, we say, where was that variable initialized, formally declared? Well, since this variable was formally declared on the root level, its scope belongs to the root level. It's not a global variable. Now, you can make global variables later on. We'll talk about that in upcoming examples. But at this point, the scope is local. In this case, it was declared on the, on the root level, so it's local to the root level. So in order to get the value of my number, we would have to define that or notice and take notice of where it was declared. So it's declared on the root. So here's the root level. What about the root level? Find me the variable called my capital N number. Make sure it's all uh, the same case sensitivity. Okay, so root my number, yes, well, it currently has a value of 30, but we're going to change the value to something like 35. It's a line of action script, we'll end it with a semicolon. Well, that's great, and right now, if we press this button, it will give us a value, my number of 35. However, let's do something else. Let's also copy this information, which displayed that inside of the text field, and we'll say, look, go find me my text field txt. Right now, because we're declaring this on the button, it might think that this is associated inside this button. It's not. It was declared on the root level. So let's say, look, go to the root level. That's where you'll find my text field txt, and then make the text inside of it say this information. The information is exactly the same as before. The only thing that's different is my number now has a value of 35. So let's test this out, control enter, and see if this works. So here, our original message says Jimmy's 35, 30 years old. When we press this, aha, Jimmy becomes 35 years old. So as you can see, buttons, callback functions associated with buttons are extremely useful, not only because they can allow us to have all of our scripts in one place, but it also shows us how even with a button we can go to the root level, find that variable that we were working with, and change its value, and then redisplay it inside of a text field as we've just done.